everyone. So, my analysis of um, chapter two of the Communist Manifesto. This, this, this chapter's a bit, it's a bit all over the place. <laughs> he starts off making an argument which is essentially anarchist, right? And then he kind of ends it with some kind of Marxist Leninist bullshit, right? So, so basically, the chapter's called Proletariat and Communists. It's basically talking about, right, so we're the communists, yeah? So, like, we recognise that there's the working class. So what relationship do we have to the working class? Do you know what I mean? Like, what are we? How do we interact with them? Like, he, he, so, he, so he says that basically that the working class are the engine that's going to overthrow capitalism, right? And we as communists, we realise this, but yet yeah, do the working class realise that that's their purpose and their, their aim and stuff? So, like, so what's our relationship to them? So he talks about, like, and basically we're not, we're not separate from the working class. He talks about, like, how we are the working class, do you know what I mean? We're just a mem we're just a part of the working class. We're just this more knowledgeable part of the working class. And as a member of the working class, we're trying to push the working class forward towards these ideas of revolution do you know what i mean um that we have to try and be so like this is like early this is like 19th century so it's like you know the the, the, the trade union movement and stuff is quite it's quite a recent thing so he's talking about how how we can make the workers recognize that they are a class that they have class interests with other members of the working class Right. So in the previous chapter, he's talking about how the working class get forced together in like um, factories and stuff. And so they're, they're in close proximity to one another. So they talk to one another. So they understand, they share their like common experiences and they recognise, hang on a minute, we've got things in common together here. Do you know what I mean? We've got a common enemy. We've got common problems and stuff. We should work together. And then that's how they kind of form trade unions that's what he's talking about in the last chapter so in this chapter he's kind of saying look yeah we're as communists we're part of this movement you know and we're part of the working class figuring out that it is a class that they have got common interests and that they have got things that they need to work together to overthrow and that they've got a common enemy so he's basically talking about how the communists that's what they are that's what their main what their main thing is do you know what i mean um and he talks about, so, so like, what are the aims of the communists? Well, our aim is to get rid of private property. Our aim is to get rid of capitalism. Our aim is to get rid of the bourgeoisie thing. Our, our, our aim is to get rid of the wage slavery. Our aim is to get rid of workers just being an adjunct to machinery and stuff, right? Um, like, in, in, in his philosophy, he has this idea of, like, alienation, that, like, how workers... Like previously, they would they would come together and they the product they would create it from the beginning to the end, right? They would get the raw materials they'd, and they create something, right? So they have this relationship with production. Whereas now in the factory, you just do a little thing, you just do this little bit, and you lose your relationship to what's being created here, right? And you basically don't even really know how the final product is created. You just know your little thing that you do, yeah. So this is, this is an idea of what he calls, like, alienation. And he mentions this in this. He talks about this, about how how workers are kind of removed from the productive forces and stuff. And are just, like, these, this, like, production. Um, and he talks about, like, you know, that, like, capitalism, like, their power and stuff, it's not a personal power. It's a social power. They don't just have, they don't just have power over what goes on in the factory, but it like extends out into the wider remit of society. So that the whole of society gets, gets like constructed around the ideas that support bourgeois capitalist ideas about production. Do you know what I mean? And the laws and the, 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 the society that's created is all based around production. And this is this is one of the things that's like central to Marxism, and I think also to anarchism as well, is that that the social forces of society, the economy, is the basis of society. Everything else is built upon that. Do you know what I mean? All of our social society, our social networks and stuff, 
are all based upon capitalism. Do you know, the ideas that run capitalism permeate into everything else that goes on in our society. And this is one of the things that he talks about in this. Um, he also talks about how how labour is reduced down to the necessity to re reproduce labour. So wages, wages are not about the the skill or, or the activity that it takes the worker to, to, to apply to the productive forces, but but re it's re wages are reduced down to just enough to make you just enough to survive and just enough to reproduce. That's all that workers are. That's what you're reduced down to. And he talks about that. Um, he talks about the average wage of the price is the minimum wage, the quantum means of subsistence, which is absolute requisite to keep the labour in bare existence as a labourer. So as long as the labourer has enough money to to, can, to just exist and to be a labourer, then that's as much as he's going to get paid. Do you know what I mean? He's not going to get paid any more than that. So he talks about that. And I think that's kind of like really... Do you know what I mean? We see that today in in the way that things are, that people have basically work three or four jobs and they haven't got enough to live on. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, so like, even today, we go below, below that. People are not getting paid enough to live on. Do you know what I mean? But like he was saying in 19th century, that basically you just got paid just enough to survive, just enough to live, just enough to reproduce, and that was it. And that's basically all that you got, right? And he goes on about basically... He looks, he kind of like, he makes arguments about from the bourgeois perspective of like what you're saying that we need to get rid of. So one of the things that's quite interesting in this, which is something that's quite new for the 19th century, is he talks about women, right? And women's place within this. So like, previously women wouldn't have been thought of as being labourers or as workers. But under capitalism, that doesn't matter. Everybody, anybody, any anybody proletariat can work, whether it's a man, a woman or a child doesn't matter to them. Whereas before, under feudal society, children wouldn't have been working, do you know what I mean? Women wouldn't have done really done much work either. Well, certainly not like physical labouring work. Women would have been doing like, you know, knitting or, or, or stuff like that. Whereas like the, the manual labour of like the feudal thing would be like farming and stuff. That would have been all been done by men. But basically saying, like, well, basically women are, like, are basically just treated exactly the same as men here. Do you know what I mean? And, like, he's basically saying that, like, women will be freed under ca under communism. Do you know what I mean? And they'll not be, like, tied down in this. So this is, like, kind of, like, like a kind of, like, um, pre -fem It's not feminism, but it's kind of a pre-feminist kind of idea, which is kind of new. Is Nobody else writing around this time was talking in these kind of terms. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of another thing that he mentions here about women and women's condition under capitalism and stuff and how they're just reduced to exactly the same situation as men. It's a kind of confusing kind of argument that he's making, but it's an interesting one that's that's not really mentioned by many other writers around that kind of time. Um, do you know what I mean? So he talks about like the family as well, of like how we get rid of the family, because the family is not really... It's basically just seen as, like, something to be exploited under capitalism. Do you know what I mean? Family is just a collection of people who need to be exploited. It's not a special category of, of social relationships and stuff. And basically Marx is saying that, like, the family will be freed from this under communism. So he's basically a lot of times talking, like, the, the, the chapter's called Proletariat and Communist, but he's a lot of times they talking... ...interact with one another... So, so there's quite a little bit, of quite a lot going on in this chapter, really. Um, he talks also about how how communism will like break down the national boundaries. So, communism, because the working class, because the bourgeois, because the proletariat is international. Do you know the proletariat in France and Germany and stuff? They have the same relationships, the same interconnectedness. He sees the revolution as not being a national, of being of a national character, but of being of an international character. And so, the 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 he needs that in vision of revolution. The workers will take over an international thing, which will break down these barriers of national identity and nation and nationality. That we will have a, a worldwide 
community and stuff, which is something that is like still part of anarchism and Marxism. But this is an international movement, an international revolution that will take place here. And he talks about how these things uh, will be broken down through the revolution. Um, so I think that like the first part of this of this, this chapter is very anarchistic. You can see many things that the anarchists argue that that Marx is putting forward, and then at, right at the end, he just falls into some crazy kind of, kind of Marxist Leninist bullshit. You know what I mean? They start talking about, yes, we need to centralise the banking system. No, we fucking don't. No, we need to get rid of money. We need to get rid of money. That's what we need to do, Marx. I don't know the fuck you are talking about. Right, and, and like, whatever, the centralisation of the means of communication and transport in the hands of the state. No, we need to get rid of the state. Right, this is bullshit. So these, these, these like, he comes out with like ten fucking things, right? So some of them are pretty cool. Do you know what I mean? We need to get rid of our, um, abolition of property. Of course, obviously... He says, like, a heavy, progressive, graduated income tax. No, we need to get rid of money, right? Do you know what I mean? This is like, this is like Kropotkin. Kropotkin with his, like, anarcho-communism. We get rid of money. Marxist communism has still got money for some reason, which is just bullshit, right? Whatever. I'm totally against that. Basically, I'm against about eight of these ten things, right? It comes out with. Free education for all children. Yeah, I agree with that. The combination of agriculture with manufacturing in the industries. I'm, I don't really give a fuck about either of that, any of that. Equal liability and the establishment of industrial armies. Okay, fair enough. I'm up for that. Extensions of factories and instruments of productions owned by the state. No, get rid of the state. Fuck that shit. Centralisation of the means of communication with the state. No, get rid of the state. Centralisation of credit in the hands of the state. No, get rid of the state. Confiscation of property of all emigrants and rebels. Why is that even a thing? I don't even know. Abolition of all rights of inheritance. Fair enough. Heavy progressive tax. No, get rid of that. Abolition of property. Fair enough. So, as an anarchist, like I agree with everything up to the last chapter where he just seems to fall into some crazy Marxist-Leninist bullshit. But whatever, yeah, that's chapter two.